Hi everybody and welcome to our second art class. Um, so today we're going to be doing um, a seascape and I've chosen um, another place, uh, Crosby Beach. It's Anthony Gormley's um, installation of his beautiful 100 Iron Men um, that span three kilometres of the beach. Um, it's a very moving installation. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have been there. Um, and um, it's about uh, the ebb and flow of life and um, how that relates to man and how it's, it's sort of exploring how man relates to nature as well. So anyway, let's get started. So I have done this sort of practice one. This is, this is the first one, but obviously we'll be doing another one today. What I've done is just collected some photographs from Google, just put in another place, Anthony Gormley, and you'll get lots of beautiful pictures come up. I have done this one before. I did it in acrylics and uh, it turned out really nice. It was very, very moody. But we're going to do something a little bit lighter today. So we're going to start with this one now. I'm going to paint wet on wet to get the sky in. And um, so I'm going to have to paint with it flat. So my lovely, lovely assistant Lulu is going to do that for me. I will just show you the colours that we're going to choose today. We're going to use rather. So cobalt blue, indigo, paints grey yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. Okay, perfect. All right, so I'm gonna pop that there. Move that there, and then we'll get started. So all I've done is um, got, got a, a horizon in, and I've come up about a third of the way up my page. It's about eight centimeters, because I'm just doing this on a small piece of paper. I'm just using an A4. I would normally paint on A3, um, but I'm gonna do an A4 today, just because um, I'm just gonna recommend that you do it on a smaller one as well, because it's a wet and wet technique, and it's quite a warm day. Um, the water will dry really quickly, um, so it's just to buy you a little bit more time. Um, to get the really, really fresh blending of colours because the thing is when you're doing the skies you've got to get the paint on, not move it around too much, leave it on and, and, and move on to the next part of the paper um, and then you'll get, you know, all these lovely effects, you know, possibly some um, lovely blending and maybe even cauliflowers and things like that happening. So I've wet my page and I've just made sure that it's all totally wet, which I think it is. Does it look wet to you, Lulu? Yeah. Okay. Right, let's get painting. So I'm going to use a big brush. And I'm going to just start with a paint grey. So I've got a number 12 brush. And when I'm going to put the, the paint on, I'm going to try and put it on in different tones. And what I'm going to do is leave a white space about here, okay? Yes, like that. Thank you, Lou. Well done. Oh, you're good, aren't you? <laughs> so I'm putting my paint grey on first. And obviously I'm adding moisture to the page. That's, that is now wetter than the rest of the page, if you know what I mean. The rest of it's drying, so we've got to be quick and move this paint on. We really do. Let's go in with some indigo now. Get some indigo in there. Just so we have this really lovely moody sky and I just want to try and create a bit of movement in the sky. So I'm going to go in with some cobalt blue now. But I can already feel that it's sort of dark, starting to uh, dry a little bit. I'm just going to put a little bit of cobalt blue there just so that I've got... I've just, it's almost like I'm wetting the page again really. I'm just going to try and get these feeling like clouds. You like that. Okay, and then I'm going to put a little bit of yellow ochre in here, just a little bit, just a smidgen across here, streak across that sky. And then maybe some on the other side. And I just want to get the delicacy of some little clouds in the centre here, so hopefully this is still wet, it is. So I'm just going to just lace these little clouds along here and then they can go up there. Maybe just a tad of Payne's Grey in that, just to dirty it up a bit. 
see how that works out. So get a bit more burnt sienna up here. A bit stronger there, I think. There. And then a little bit more burnt sienna over here as well. When the burnt sienna mixes with the blue, it does actually create a bit of a grey colour. Just get a bit, make that a bit stronger, I think. You can just have that whisking up there, a bit like that, just to try and get that movement. So we get a bit stronger blue happening. Up there. Stronger here as well. That's yeah, looking pretty nice. Just want to increase that yellow across there. And maybe just a little bit of indigo just here. Okay, so something like that. Can get a bit more paint grey in. So it's just feeling your way around, just trying to get some, you know, looking quite moody. I think we're going for. So I've left that open space here, that white gap, which isn't as big as I would have liked, but I'm just going to draw a bit out now. So I'm just getting my flat brush, and it's a clean brush. And I'm just going to sweep out a little bit of the sky, so that's quite a thick piece. I'm just going to sweep out a lesser piece there. Can you picking that up, Lou? Do you think? Is yeah. It showing up. And then maybe just a little bit of the sunlight coming there. Just, just picking a little bit of that up so that we've got this idea. I'm just going to leave it up right now. So we've got this idea of the sun. Um, just popping through the clouds. Just let me pop it on there. And then what will happen as that's drying, we'll just get more of this, these colours bleeding down, which will be really, really nice.